folks, Finless Bob here, and uh, by request, several people wanted to see the guts of different 3188 rock chip TV sticks that I've got. So first one on the block that I've taken apart is the uh, CX919. This is the unit that has the external antenna. So that was simple to pop apart. Pop that apart, and what you will see on here for any kind of heat sink is just this little metal plate. Okay, so underneath there is the processor and the RAM, and on this side, of course, you got your NAND flash and other uh, things here with memory. As you can see, the board says CX919 version 1.1. So this is the inside of the CX919. Okay, so I'm going to put it back together uh, now that you've got it, and uh, we'll take another one apart and take a look at it. Alrighty, next up is the MK908. It is built very much like MK808. There's two Wi-Fi antennas in here. One has a pin which sits right here and touches down on an antenna that's in the case here. As you see on the processor side of the board, there's a little heat sink here. It's stuck to the processor, which is under here. There's some memory chips up here, which you can see if you look through the side of the board, it's the heat sink is not really touching those memory chips. And uh, I, I'm not going to pry it off. But I also see, an, I think, a NAND chip or something under here that it's also not touching. So this heat sink is really only stuck to the processor, which is all it really needs to be, in my opinion. All right, on this side of the board is also like a copper strip that is stuck to uh, what looks like the memory and uh, blob of glue here really doing nothing. That's just what it's stuck to. Um, but it's just a little metal plate, copper plate. I think it's probably more for what I call noise or EME blocking rather than any type of cooling, really. In other words, it's just a RF shield that's blocking noise from getting outside of the unit. Anyway, be careful when you take this apart. Uh, this side does have an antenna, very similar to the MK808, that's uh, soldered. Okay, You don't want to rip that up if you pry yours apart. Um, and then the other side has this uh, pin touch that touches the, uh, the case. So anyway, I'm going to put mine back together here as best I can without messing it up. And that is the MK908. Again, I'm not going to pry my heat sinks off uh, just to show you the components under the board, but I can guarantee the processor is sitting right here. All right, so that's MK908. Next, we'll look at the uh, QX1. Okay, folks, here's the uh, Imedo QX1. And uh, basically, the way you take it apart is when you look at the HDMI port, you'll see there's a little notch uh, on one side. Basically, just get under there with a screwdriver and pop it. Now, you want to be careful as you're pulling this apart not to bend the lid, okay, because the lid is part of the cooling, and I'll show you here as soon as I get this out of here. All right, so once we get this off, you will find that the Wi-Fi antenna is once again stuck to the lid, all right, and is soldered to the board. You'll see on the processor there's a thermal transfer pad. It is not just sticky tape or double sticky tape. It is a transfer pad. And as you'll see, there's a notch in the case where that pad is touching the metal lid of this Imito case. And I will tell you, while I've been running this, you can definitely feel the heat transfer to this metal plate. Okay, take the thing out of the rest of the case. And as you can see, uh, we've got NAND, we've got RAM, we've got other support chips on here. Take a look and uh, basically you can see the case has notches here for other um, uh, transfer pads. So in theory they could have put heat transfer pads on all of these other chips uh, as part of the case to transfer heat. However, probably not needed as again usually it's the uh, processor and the Wi-Fi chipset that gets the hottest. Okay. So anyway, that's the QX1. You can see it's cooling. It's basically transferring to the case. The reason I said don't bend this lid is if you bow it, then this uh, transfer pad may not be touching the, the lid. So be very careful there when you pop this apart not to bend the lid up uh, so that you can't uh, transfer heat anymore. All right, so there is the Imedo stick, and it's cooling. Uh, I'd have to say of the bunch, the... 908 has that heat sink, which I'm sure is helpful. It's designed just like the MK808 on the 3066. This transfer pad on the Amido is probably also uh, one of the better cooling methods. Certainly better than the uh, 
uh, CX919 with its little flimsy metal plate. I am not going to take apart the Tron Smart, uh, basically because it's all glued together. These metal sides are sticky taped on, and you got to do a lot of prying to get this apart. But based on pictures we've seen of the Tron Smart, it's got the little metal plate similar to the uh, CX919. All right, so uh, that's going to do it. So that gives you the Tron Smart, the MK908, the Imedo, and the uh, uh, CX919, uh, its cooling and what they look inside. Pretty much they're all built very similar, just a little bit differences in, uh, in how they're cooled. All right, hope, hope that was helpful, and we'll see you around.